time for Nerdgasm. Hey, what's up Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles, and I think it's about time we get into some 3D printing stuff again, or just maker things in general. Now, a while ago, I did a 3D printing video that became very popular, and that was 3D printing and testing the NASA Space Wrench. Now, if you guys haven't seen that video, I have a link down in the video description, and I urge you to watch it. But the short version of the story is NASA figured out how to engineer a ratchet that prints as a single piece on a standard desktop 3D printer, and it actually breaks away into a ratcheting component and works is a functional tool. Now, the reason why this was important is because the International Space Station has a 3D printer, but it's just like my desktop 3D printers, like the Ultimakers and MakerBots of the world, uh, where they just use a process called FDM, which just extrudes filament through a hot end, which then liquefies it, then it deposits it, and it basically re-solidifies. And it's a very, very simple and inexpensive way to create things, but creating moving parts is exceedingly difficult since everything has to be touching because you build a layer on top of another layer on top of itself. Now, I thought this was cool that they overcame that challenge with engineering of the 3D model, but what blew my mind was when I found this guy right here. This is a platform jack printed as a single piece. Yes, look at this. This guy right here was printed as a single piece and a single 3D model on an FDM based desktop printer, specifically the Ultimaker 2. And it just blows my mind because it has not just one moving part, it's all moving parts. So guys, if you wanna see how I 3D printed this and got this to work, just stay tuned. All right, guys, well, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to thingiverse.com. This is actually a website uh, for finding 3D items to print on your desktop 3D printer that were created by other users in the community. Now, there's many different sites and repositories, but Thingiverse is one of my favorites. So we're gonna go up into the search box and we're just gonna type platform jack and press enter. Now, you can see the first item here is actually the jack we're gonna be printing in this video, but you can see there's already some people that have changed up the design to use bolts and things like that, but we're gonna use the original. And this was created by Intentional 3D right here. And you can see on Thingiverse, it shows you several different pictures of what the project will look like. He talks about some of the updates to the projects and revisions that he's made. And then down here, he even talks about how he printed it, layer height, and all kinds of information. This is pretty typical of projects on Thingiverse. So what we wanna do is we wanna go download this item. So let's go ahead and click download this thing. And then down here you can see there's several different iterations of it. There's this platform jack STL, which looks like it was published on 716. Then on 722, there was an updated one. And then another one that he created with even higher tolerances. So the one I downloaded was the one with the highest tolerances, which is the 0 0.65 millimeter tolerances, just to give myself the best chance of success. You go ahead and click on that item and it'll download to your computer. All right, so now that we have the 3D model downloaded, I have my slicer opened here. Specifically, it's Cura version 15.04.3 by Altimaker. Now, this is one of my favorite slicers, or I should say my favorite free slicer. If you're looking to spend a little money and get a better slicer, check out Simplify 3D. But as far as free slicers go, I like this one the best. You can configure it for any printer that you want. I have mine set up for my Altimaker 2. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and drag in the model right now. This is the platform jack, the 65 millimeter tolerance version and you can see it's loading here on the platform. Now, one thing you wanna note is do not change the orientation of this. Do not rotate it, do not uh, move it around the platform. Just leave it centered right here. Trust me, it'll give you your best result. So what I wanna do is I don't wanna just print the platform jack that was designed. I wanna scale it up. I wanna go big or go home here. So we're gonna go ahead and scale it up to 200% by putting in 2.0 scale factor. And you can see now it fills most of the build platform. I mean, this thing is absolutely huge. Now, a couple of other things I wanna change is I wanna come over here and make sure that I'm using a 0 0.2 millimeter layer height. And the reason for that being is it's gonna cut down print time dramatically. Um, it will affect the quality of the print, but honestly, even at 0.2, it's gonna look good at this scale. I also changed my fill density to 80%, whereas the person that created this on Thingiverse said that he only used 15% infill, but I had some problems with breakage. Um, so I wanted to go for a much stronger part. Now, another thing you wanna make sure is make sure that support type is set to none and make sure platform adhesion is set to none. You do not want either of those enabled because what they'll do is they'll print additional material to try to hold up the floating parts. And what it'll do is it'll bind everything together and it's not gonna work. So the whole magic 
of this item is making sure that you do not use support material. And I'll show you a little bit more about that after we print the object. Now, if we switch over to the layers view here, um, you can see our total print time is gonna be 58 hours and 25 minutes. Now I found in Cura that the print times are often inaccurate, so I wouldn't trust that, but pretty much allow yourself two full days to print this item. I mean, it's, it's literally gonna take that long because of the infill and because of how tall the item is. The Z axis is what slows things down the most on these printers. You can see right now, even at a point or a 0 0.2 millimeter layer height, we have over 900 layers that this thing has to print. This thing is absolutely massive. All right, there's only one thing left to do. Let's go ahead and send this thing over to 3D printer and uh, sit on our hands for a couple days. All right, so the final product off the 3D printer is a box. This is what you get. And it's actually fused together lightly when you first print it. So when you take it off, it's a solid piece. So what you have to do is grab it and wiggle it around a little bit to break some of the things free. And then you wanna gently, gently turn the knob. Now I've already broke this one free, uh, but you do have to be very, very gentle. The first one that I printed, um, I actually broke the knob off because I was getting too aggressive with it. You wanna ease it back and forth clean the threads and get everything to break loose. But then once everything is loose, you can set the jack down and just turn the knob and it'll actually expand. And you'll see this jack actually gets really tall. Look at that here, I'm gonna take it all the way up to its maximum height here, which you can see again, I mean, for something that just printed is a box. Okay, so that's, let's see, that's max height right there and it actually can bear a fair amount of weight it's not bad like for instance here's my my old camera i'll set it up there it has no problem with that uh i can also lower it got to get it to bite the threads there we go and it'll go back down now of course i've noticed the taller that it is um the less weight it's going to support because it does start to get a little bit of fragile as the scissors uh move closer towards this side all right, I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a close up here. You can see down here immediately that the quality actually isn't that good. You can see some stringing uh, along the edge here and that's because they can't use support material. Normally what you would do is you'd use support material uh, between these areas and you can't do that because it would fuse the parts together and they wouldn't be allowed to move. So instead it just bridges this entire massive gap and keep in mind, guys, I actually printed this thing at 200%. I didn't print this at the stock size. This is double um, the size that you would get if you just printed the model after downloading it. Uh, so I, I really like the results considering how far it had to bridge some of these areas. You can see there's some quality issues uh, right back along this edge here and some places that need some cleanup, but it worked fine without, this model has no cleanup. This is straight off the printer as I'm using it. You see the knob there when I'm turning the mechanism. Uh, it's actually printed, threaded through that hole, which I find absolutely fascinating, guys. I mean, literally, it printed, when it was in this orientation, it was printing. It actually printed that box around that without enough of that thread fusing together um, to prevent it from working. And I, I don't know, I find that pretty damn amazing. I would love to hear what you guys think down in the comments. You can also see down here at the bottom, basically these little guys just slide along the little groove. But again, when the thing's printed, there is a little bit of fusion uh, between the parts that you do have to break free. So like I said, just be gentle with it and just wiggle it a lot and uh, make sure that you know everything's good and broken free before doing uh, anything or really torquing on that knob. Because if you torque on this knob too hard when it's all fused together, you will break it off. And I already did that once. And that was a huge waste of material. Now the original model only called for about 15% infill to print the part a lot faster. But I went with 80% infill. Cause like I said, when I broke the knob the first time, 
Uh, I was a little apprehensive and I wanted to increase my odds, but realized it dramatically increased the print time on this. The print time on this was insanely long. But as you can see, it is a very large part compared to most of the stuff I 3D print. And the fact that it scaled up and it still works is, is fantastic because you will find with 3D printing that scaling certain things can expose some weaknesses and stuff where they're fine as a small part, but not that great as a large part or vice versa. Um, and this thing works absolutely perfect. I, I, I kind of want to try one where I downscale it and print it at a much smaller size. Now this specific one I printed using ColorFab XT, which is actually a material that's similar to PLA um, in how it prints, except for it has a much higher melting temperature, which makes it a lot more resilient to uh, being set out in the sun and things like that. Not necessarily something that's really important to this project, but I did want to use a durable material because it does have a lot of parts rubbing around. All right, let's take my heavy DeWalt screwdriver here and set it on top. It bends a little bit, but it does hold the weight. This is actually a pretty heavy duty drill, so it's got quite a bit of weight to it. Let's find something else. What about my giant Arch Audio speaker? This thing weighs about, I wanna say eight or 10 pounds. Woo! <laughs> You gotta balance it. It wants to. It's holding it. It wants to tilt and teeter a little bit, but that's that's a lot of weight. I didn't think that was gonna hold. But of course, if you tilt it forward, it's gonna wanna try to snap. Almost surprisingly, it's doing all right. Ugh. How about my Dyson vacuum? Ugh, this thing's got to weigh 20 plus pounds. <laughs> it works. I'm having to keep it from leaning over, but it's supporting it. Ooh, you can tell it's straining. Oh, it's crinkling. Oh, it's holding though. Okay, I have to say so far I'm pretty impressed. I didn't think that it was going to hold the vacuum. The mechanism is still working. How about a KRK studio monitor? These things actually weigh a lot. I would say they weigh similar to the vacuum, but I might be able to actually let go of it. <clears throat> Ooh, she's, she's squatting a little bit, but it's holding it. Look at this, you could use the scissor lift to like position your studio monitors. I'm having to support it while I jack it up because it's creating too much friction on the screw. But there you go. Studio monitor stands, you can get them perfectly at head height. Oh, that's not head height. Let's put it down a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. There we go. Now keep in mind, I printed this at 200%. You could probably even scale it up a little more than that, like 250 or 300 and it's gonna beef it up a little. Also be sure to check the Thingiverse page, which I have linked in the video description because they're constantly revising this thing to make it stronger. I believe when I printed it, it wasn't even the final design. So as you guys can see, it is supporting the speaker here and it's doing a damn good job of it. I mean, I'm actually surprised at that, but it's kind of cool. You could use them for speaker stands. You could use them for working on like RC cars and stuff like that. I think it's a really cool concept, but my mind is really blown away because I think it illustrates what 3D printers are really capable of. You're not just limited by the limitations of the 3D printer. You can actually design around those limitations like this person did and design something with a lot of moving parts. And I'm really excited to see what other kind of cool stuff people come up with because I've printed stuff like fans and gearboxes where you printed all the individual parts and put them together. But this is the first thing that I've printed that had this many moving parts as a single thing. I, I pulled this off the build platform as a single part. If you look at the parts like this one right here, you can clearly see that there's no way to take that apart. <laughs> it's actually printed in such a way that it's through the groove. So it's it's stuck that way. You're not disassembling this thing without actually breaking it. And I think that's something else that makes it really, really cool. I really would love to hear what you guys think about this platform jack down in the comments. Please let me know because this is this is very, very fascinating to me. And I'd imagine to a lot of you guys it's fascinating also because this just makes me want to print more stuff on my 3D printer because it's one thing to print inanimate objects, but it's another thing entirely to print something as one piece that you just break off and it just, it just moves. Because this is stuff that before... I started printing stuff like this in the NASA Space Ranch. I thought that you'd have to have a printer that was, you know, $150,000 plus dollars that 
uh, that used like the powder and the fusion and everything to separate the parts and do mechanical stuff. And the fact that you can do this with a desktop 3D printer, uh, in a lot of cases that's under $1,000, that's mind blowing. I would like to take a moment right now to thank our awesome sponsor for this video, and that is lynda.com. Now, for those of you that are unfamiliar with lynda.com, they're an online educator with focus on video courses to show anybody how to do stuff in the information technology space. Now, as it pertains to 3D printing, they have a huge library of courses teaching you everything from basic operation of a 3D printer all the way up to designing and printing your own 3D objects from scratch using industry standard programs programs like Google SketchUp and Tinkercad, which are also freely available. They also have offered to give all of you guys a free 10-day trial just to try out their service risk-free, and there is a link in the video description, and I hope you guys all take them up on that offer. Also, as a side bonus, if you guys are into uh, computer programming, like I do in the Codegasm series, they have a vast library of courses on how to program computers. They have just about every language you could think of and every course ranging from beginner all the way up through advanced. So guys, Guys, I really urge you to try out their service. They're an excellent sponsor for the channel because I've been a customer of their service and I will continue to be a customer of their service. So I would love to hear your guys' feedback on lynda.com. I think they're amazing and honestly, I think you will too. Hey guys, somebody stopped by and wanted to say hi. Come here, buddy. Okay. This right here is Xander. He's my five and a half year old son. I'm sure if you guys have followed the channel, you know exactly who this little guy is. He makes a cameo every once in a while in the video, but he absolutely loves that his daddy does YouTube for a living. And we both wanted to thank you guys for allowing that, that opportunity to support my family and do what I love. Because to be honest, back when I worked at Microsoft as a software developer, I was in the office for 12 to 14 hours a day and I didn't get to spend a lot of time with my family. And now that I work from home, I get to spend a lot of time with these guys and it means the absolute world to me and Xander could you please tell everybody of the internet thank you so much for letting daddy work from home thank you um, for everyone thank you for daddy for working with us and our work today and hey daddy yeah do you want to play a video upstairs here I do want to play a video game so why don't we tell everybody that they can go ahead and tweet me if they have a question at Barnacles, or they can leave a comment down below. And if you guys are interested in buying some cool shirts, check out shop.barnard.com. I have this one up there along with a bunch of other really cool stuff. And between the store and doing YouTube and everything like that, it's it, it's been a great stress relief to know that I can actually succeed on my own with your guys' help. And I look forward to making tons and tons more videos. Xander, do you want to say anything else before we end this video? Alright, let me just grab something. You gonna grab what are you grabbing? Alright, so this is toilet paper. <laughs> so this is toilet paper for You sure the, those aren't paper towels? Um they're toilet paper. Alright, so guys on that bombshell. It, it is toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> this is my life, guys, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. All right, see you guys later. Till next time. Okay, but it is. <laughs> it is toilet paper. Okay, fine. It's, it's toilet paper. Toilet it's toilet paper. paper. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Also, come over to Twitter. I'm at Barnacles. I'm a real social guy. Also, if you have a couple of minutes, check out some of these many other videos. I made them myself. <laughs> <laughs>